Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Jade Alberts. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, and I'm a small business strategist, influencer, and my passion is helping small businesses grow and succeed. I started the Telling It Like It Is Facebook Live to share stories from small businesses and entrepreneurs. It is so important to, to listen and learn and network at the entire time. So if you have any questions, please ask during the broadcast. We will answer them. If it's after the broadcast, we will get to them as well. A special thank you goes out to Rogers Insurance for sponsoring uh, our chat here. They supply the, they are a, the human approach to insurance. I highly recommend giving them a call. Someone will answer the phone and put you in touch with the, with a live person. And I mean, I've been a client of theirs for 16 years and Karen and I have an actual relationship and it's been awesome. Well, let's get to today. Today's telling it like it is gift is Michael Burak from languages in motion. Michael, thank you for joining me. And how are you today? Doing great. It's a beautiful morning in Calgary and uh, yeah, just uh, overall doing well. No, it is. Uh, I guess we got a little Olympic hangover, but uh, now we can, uh, now that everybody has spoken, we can kind of move on and smoke us, focus on how, uh, how good small businesses and entrepreneurs in the tech industry is doing in Calgary. For sure. So I'll give a brief introduction of uh, Michael here and then we'll get at her. Uh, Michael started at the university, started Calgary Translation Association or CTA that helped people use second language as an asset. The club was focused on helping people develop their translation skills, a career that didn't get much attention in Alberta, but receives a lot of attention in Eastern Canada and in Quebec, obviously for the French and the English translators. The community reacted to Michael's club within a few months of having started CT, C, UCTA businesses and individuals were requesting translation services from the students. Identifying a need for this service, Michael created Languages in Motion, a translation interp interp interpreting company that has been around for seven years and counting. So I guess that is really neat. I mean, I you know when I met you at uh, one of the uh, Alberta Rainforce um, socials, I, I've never heard of this. I know I really needed this, and our company needed this with Nathan's when we were translating everything into French, and I had to Google it, but. I mean, your intro explains how you started it, but prior to that, were you passionate about uh, translation? Well, it's actually, um, it, it, translation came a little later. I, I started out being more passionate about language as, uh, as I started out um, in university. I just studied languages. I studied Russian, Spanish, and French, and, and I was studying linguistics. So that was really my, my, big, uh, my big draw. And what I, what I realized is uh, at the end of uh, my, my journey in linguistics and language, I, although I was really passionate about it, there wasn't too many options for me in a, uh, from a career perspective. So I found out that actually being a translator is very, very versatile. It was an opportunity for people to um, obviously develop their language, but also do it in a way that they can pick almost any industry that they want to work in as well as um, as you know be able to you know fulfill their passion so I, I, I thought what an incredible um, kind of merging of the two work and your passion and so I thought well why don't I help people to become translators and that's where the, the, uh, the spring up for translation really the passion for translation really sprung up well, that is very interesting. I guess, um, did, did, did you see a lot of clubs turn into businesses at the UFC? Is this something that regularly happens or are you kind of uh, an anomaly? Well, I mean, I, the, the club that I actually modeled um, after was ISEC, and that's, it is kind of an international business. ISEC okay. is an organization that places interns with corporations globally. And so... Although I wasn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't see any other clubs become businesses. I saw ISEC, and I was actually a member, and then that's okay. that, that's what led me to start UCTA, and uh, and yeah, they were kind of already a business. So, I that idea was it was an easier transition because I, I had seen what they were doing in the university and globally. Oh, that's interesting. That's cool. That's good. I mean, it's nice to see something to model on and actually somebody has a success as well. Uh, I imagine there's a lot of industries that need translations. What's some of the ones that you have worked with in the past or, or hoping to in the future? 
Um, well, in the past, actually, we've done we've, we've pretty much built our business on a couple of founding uh, clients. Um, one uh, that we have a lot of requests from are Im individual immigrants. We we serve hundreds of in immigrants every year um, with uh, translation services for their personal documents. Uh, we work with Alberta registries. Um, so if you go to the registry and ask for a translation, we're we're very likely their partner, uh, helping su helping support that. Uh, and it, yeah, it's just individuals who come studying abroad or they're applying for their permanent residence. Uh, so quite a few people like that. We're we're very happy to be able to help in that area. Um, the other area that we do a lot of work in is uh, it's with law firms. Um, so we do uh, all sorts of different types of international uh, international work whether it's uh, uh, terms and conditions or, or contracts or um, uh, for uh, for some firms, international arbitration, which means that they're um, they're dealing with a lawsuit that's happened in overseas in different languages. Um, and then, so yeah, that's, that's, that, that's our second area of, uh, of work. And then after that, you know, we get a lot of requests from pretty much everyone. Um, services companies in, in Canada, going to Eastern Canada, um, marketing agencies, uh, doing, doing a lot of, uh, campaigns, whether that be overseas, uh, here in Canada, or, um, even something like tourism where they're marketing, uh, where, where they're marketing their municipality or they're marketing their, their small region. And they want to, you know, uh, market that in Holland or in Germany or in China or in or uh, or in South America or wherever. So, yeah, it's it's very broad. The clients are very broad. We've we, it's it's kind of tough to nail it down. In fact, that was one of our biggest challenges at the beginning: is who do we focus on? Um, because we would receive requests from literally everybody. Like, we, it starts with the with the with the immigrant population, and then it moved uh, quickly over to uh, you know a real estate um, investment firm. And then over to a marketing agency, and then an oil and gas company, and then and it's just like it was it was it was a lot of work and a lot of different areas. So we we finally decided that you know where we're going to focus on, and that was the first two I mentioned. Well, no, that, that is all. I mean, I guess like as I even in the intro there, you know, it's such a broad and and obviously you know having some key partners you know for for immigrants and having that makes you successful. So do you, you know, you know, you might have a, you know, a little different uh, situation than some of the other entrepreneurs or small businesses in the city where you're able to expand, you know, a wide variety, a wide variety of industries. Do you focus and now, do you kind of focus on some of them or how do you market to them? Is it a lot of word of mouth or how, how are you going to, you know, move forward? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting because we, we originally started with, um, with sort of the, with the student club, really. I mean, people started calling us and we responded. That's kind of, that's how the business started. So for the last seven years that we've been in business, the majority of our, our interactions with clients have been sort of a response to their inquiry. Um, so we haven't had to, other than like search engine optimization and, you know, kind of just showing up on the local, uh, local search engine, um, yeah we haven't really had to do any active marketing or active sales other than obviously myself walking around and saying, Hey, I'm Michael and we do translation, <laughs> but uh, you know, that's really been it. And, and really recently when, as I've been getting involved in the startup community and taking a different approach to our business and taking a different approach to some of the technology that we're working with, um, I found that, uh, that, you know, there's a whole other world of, of strategy when it comes to client acquisition and customer journey and, and really understanding, you know, how to work with people and really get to know why they why they buy and why they uh, they require translation services and being able to help them from the beginning um, of the inception of the idea. Oh, we want to create this document and it would be great if we had it in nine languages being there to help them along that process is. Uh, is what we're aiming for. So it's something that we're we're moving towards now that we're we have this different approach. Um, and uh, but in the past we've really just we've just shown up and and we've been fortunate enough to to be able to work with many uh, really good clients. 
Oh, well, that is awesome. So when it comes to, uh, I guess, your kind of your staff, were you able to keep a lot of people from the club or, you know, were they able to turn this into a career? Are you hiring a lot of people? Do you have a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, freelancers, so to say? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> first of all, there are a couple of people who are from the club and we actually work with them as interpreters. So that's pretty cool. That is cool. Um, and, uh, and translators. And so... Yeah, that, that's been actually really neat to see some of the people actually move forward and progress. Some of the relationships I built back in the club are still powerful today um, with either some of the certified translators or some of the people that are professionals in the industry. Um, some of the immigrant serving organizations uh, still have great relationships with some of those that we met um, at the very beginning. So, yeah, I mean, they're the, the organizations that we've... Uh, that we've worked with along those ways, uh, along that uh, journey have, have stayed strong. Oh, no, that's awesome. Especially, you know, building, building those strong relationships. Um, and I mean, as you and I met uh, at, at a networking event, do you, do you, I mean, I always promote that you have to be out there, especially with small businesses out there networking. Is it something that you do? Do you hit a lot of events and network a lot? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's always good to get out there and meet new people, get new perspectives. Um, I've always tried to be out outside of the office as much as possible, yeah. just getting to know people and getting to know what they're doing. And, um, you know, you realize quickly that not everybody is your customer, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, and it's it's really good to know that and be, um, you know, for me, it has been very good to know that and, and know when to talk and when not to, when when to listen, you know. Uh, it's a lesson that I've had to learn <laughs> over the years, but it's it's great, you know. I I yeah. but I do love going to networking events. They're great. There's always somebody there that you can connect with or, or meet. I find there's it, it's it's a good thing to do. So yeah. Oh no, I agree. I uh, I try and hit as many as I can. I mean, time permitting, family life, other things uh, are obviously important too. But when you said listening, that's one of the things that. I've learned, and the other one um, is learning to say no. I, that, that took a that took a long time for me to to realize uh, that saying no sometimes will save you a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. That's that, that's something that's a whole new topic. That's for sure. So no, I guess as you're growing, and that's great in Calgary, and uh, you're moving up here in Calgary. What uh, what's next for uh, languages in motion? Um, well, we've got a we've got a couple of um, of things in, in, in our, as far as our plans go. Yeah. Um, one of our, one of our big things obviously is where we're working, building up some software for our company. So in order to help uh, manage process a little better, um, just to be able to service our clients a little better. So uh, that's that. Um, we're, we're also looking at bringing on some, potentially some other executives uh, in sales and marketing. Um, we feel that uh, bringing on some more strategic help would be very beneficial for us. And uh, will will help us to grow beyond Calgary and hopefully outside of uh, Canada and the U.S. So, um, so yeah. So that's I think one of the big things that we're looking at for 2019, and and uh, and and just continually growing and finding out ways to to service our clients better. One of the big things that we're doing right now is um, is is uh, really understanding our our customer or our client. Um, we're calling up a lot of our customers and asking them why they buy and, and what they really need. Um, because we were a reactive business for so long, we were just providing services and quotes and never really got to know why they are doing what they're doing and, and, and really get, getting to know them as clients. So yes. that's one of our bigger approaches that we're taking. And, I, and I'm, you know, I, I, I attribute that to, the the uh, the organizations that I'm par a part of right now is from a startup perspective. So Junction Thirty One is the one that I'm part of right now. Um, they may or may not stay the same name, but it's a it's a great organization, and they're they're uh, they uh, they've helped me understand you know what what it's like because from a startup perspective, um, you're you're really starting from scratch, and in a lot of ways, um, our company from a outward looking perspective is starting from scratch. So it's a, uh, it's a really good perspective to have. Oh no, absolutely. And as you said, I mean, 
people buy from people, people buy from companies that they trust and getting to know your employee or your uh, clients, no matter how late in the, you know, the, the lifespan of your business is, is important. That is, that is awesome. And, and, and it's nice to see that and you hear that and the people that you're out there, whether it be a mentor or somebody, or even we had that brief discussion yesterday, you said you left there and, and it was a question that really made you think, I mean, stuff, you know, finding out stuff and listening to people like that are, are priceless. And that's, that's only going to benefit your business as well. So that's great. Mm -hmm. So I guess the last question I always ask is uh, if you have one, you know, one piece of advice for an entrepreneur, solarpreneur, a small business, uh, Michael, what would it be? Well, um, I gave a lot of thought to, to what I could, um, what I could share with people. And I think the most important thing, um, would be what I've heard referred to as your teachability index, which is your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept change. Um, so basically rate yourself on from one to 10, a willingness to learn and and rate yourself from one to 10 on a willingness to accept change. Um, and if you're less than a hundred, then you got some work to do. If you're a hundred, then you're going to do well because, um, you know, if you're not willing to learn, well, you're not going to, you're not going to grow. You're not going to change. You're going to be stuck in your ways forever. And, and you're, you're never going to grow your business. You're never going to grow as, as an individual and you're not going to care about your, what your, what your clients have to say. So that one's, and that was pretty obvious for most people. Yeah, we, we shouldn't be learning. Um, the willingness to accept change is the other one, though, and that's uh, that's very, very difficult because you take your learnings and then you apply them. And that's where things become quite difficult for a lot of people because we don't like to change. We like we're, we're creatures of habit. We want to stay in the same all the time and um, and we like consistency. And so the second something breaks our 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 nice habit that we've had and or a nice easy way of doing things it's frustrating it's difficult it's you know it's it's so hard to accept and the better we are at accepting that change the better we are at at um at learning from that and then implementing those those learnings becoming you know renewing our abilities every every day um the faster we'll grow and the faster we'll be able to grow as, as entrepreneurs, grow our companies. And I mean, you look and this whole willingness to accept change is so obvious in business. I mean, look at Blockbuster, look at Kodak, look at Toys R Us, you know, all these, you know, dinosaur companies that, uh, that were so awesome in their time, they were, you know, leading everything in their categories. And because they're of their unwillingness to accept change, they felt, they they went bankrupt right and and it, it applies to them and it applies to us as entrepreneurs and that's one of the things that i'm constantly trying to do i'm always trying to read new books and you know and talk to advisors and speak with people who've been there and trying to adjust and learn because we're never perfect and no matter what stage you are in life you're you're always growing you're always you you're always needing to change and you're never going to be a master and so you can get close to that you know, that mastery line, but you might never get there. Uh, you probably you will, you won't until, you know, singularity <laughs> happens and we get implants and all that fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> no discussion. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I love that. That teachability index, that is awesome. And that, uh, I mean, if uh, you should, you should almost put a little motivational speeches into your, into your languages in motion. That was an excellent advice, Michael, that, uh, and I, I highly recommend anybody that's listening to this, you know, maybe, you know, scroll back on the thing on the uh, on the bar there and 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 look and see what you rank and and, and look at yourself because personal growth is is something that's needed in, in industry and in life. So thank that was awesome, Michael. Thank you very much. No problem. Well, that is uh, that is all we have for today. So again, uh, this is Michael Burak from Languages in Motion. I really appreciate you coming on, spending your time, sharing your knowledge for other people so they're they can uh, they can learn from your experiences that is awesome thank you again you're welcome and again thank you to rogers insurance for sponsoring this you for more information you can go to www.rogersinsurance.ca backslash jade uh, for some discounts and
and they will help you out. So again, thank you to Michael. Thank you to Rogers. I hope everyone has a great day and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.